Our scripture reading today comes from Psalm number 27, and I'd like to read verses 11 through 14. The psalmist says there, teach me how to live, O Lord. Lead me along the right path, for my enemies are waiting for me. Do not let me fall into their hands, for they accuse me of things I've never done. With every breath they threaten me with violence. Yet I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness while I'm here in the land of the living. Wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Do you ever feel like things are moving way too fast? Anybody? I know I do. It seems as if society is in a big hurry to get somewhere, but yet they don't seem to have any idea where it is that they're headed. Everything is changing at breakneck speed all around us. Society is traveling in high gear. They question almost every old and tried way and want to quickly exchange it for something new, something unproven often. I don't know if there are very many off-limit subjects left anymore. They want to redefine everything. In the last few years, modern culture has redefined life. Years of science, marriage, redefine it. Work ethic, redefine it. And the nature of God, if they bother at all to even still acknowledge Him. But as society moves faster and faster toward human fulfillment without God, they don't even realize that they're moving at high speed toward their own judgment. They move too fast to acknowledge God and they sadly will pay the consequences. All the while, the psalmist instructs his audience to wait on the Lord. Wait patiently on the Lord as we live in this time, I think it's important that we don't also get swept up by the spirit of the day. The the mantra of today is I want it now. I don't want to wait for anything. The psalmist says, wait for the Lord. I want it now. We as God's people must guard our lives, guard our hearts, guard our minds. And not allow the world to squeeze us into its mold. Seems like that's the thing. All the time you hear it everywhere. Live it now. Enjoy it now. I want it now. Who can stop me? But scripture tells us to wait for the Lord. I thought it would be interesting today to take a brief look at four areas that I believe we must guard against in this fast-paced society. The first one I want to look at is instant pleasures. Now, the passage there, the longer passage, has the 
heading over it in the Bible that I was using, the dangers of the last days. Verses 1 and 2, Paul speaking to Timothy said, You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, very difficult times. He said, For people will love only themselves and their money. And then at the tail end of verse 4, you see the passage there. He says that they love pleasures rather than God. Instant pleasure is the rule rather than the exception of our time. Amen? Do you not see it? Instant pleasure. That is why sex before marriage now is common, even for confessing Christians. Because I want it now. I shouldn't have to wait. That's why entertainment replaces Sunday worship. Why? Because the Lord's Day, Sunday, that's my time. That's my time. I want it now. I have needs. My pleasure is what's most important. My fulfillment. I should have it now. Sunday is a day of mere pleasure, of course, disguised as family time, as much needed stress relief out of the presence of God. As sports day, what we're really saying there as a culture, and many times the church also swept up into the culture. What we're really saying there is my pleasure is most important. The fact is, God gave us pleasure. He wants us to enjoy life and the things of life and the earth we live on. But we're not meant to replace God with pleasure. We're not meant to make pleasure our God. Christian pleasure should be morally uplifting and wholesome. But the culture around us worships pleasure. It's also the culture that's headed for judgment. We looked at it on Wednesday night. Some of you Wednesday night folks will remember this. She's called Babylon the great prostitute. She entices God's people with pleasure in order to replace worship of God. James 5.5 5 speaks to our time undoubtedly where James says, you have spent your years on earth in luxury, satisfying your every desire. You have fattened yourselves for the day of slaughter. The followers of Christ can and should enjoy this life. We should have pleasure, but our, we don't replace God with pleasure. Our pleasure must not become our God. So we work hard in this culture to make believe that everybody's a believer. Everybody that says they're a Christian, we try to make believe that it's true. But true believers love Jesus and they find their greatest pleasure in Him. The psalmist says it this way about true believers. In Psalm 16 and 11, he says, You show me the way of life. Granting me the joy of your presence and pleasures. The pleasures of your presence and pleasures of living with you forever. It is a cheap substitute and a poor replacement to want it now and always insist on 
my pleasure now being the most important thing instead of pleasing God. Wait patiently on the Lord. So let's look at another one. Instant possessions. Now we already read in 2 Timothy that people would love only themselves and their money. Let's consider the words of Jesus in Luke chapter 12, verse 15. Here he says that beware, guard against every kind of greed. Every kind of greed. That means it's going to come at you in this culture in various different forms. And he says guard against it. Life is not measured by how much you own, or as a lot of translations say, by the abundance of one's possessions. We live in a land of plenty. Materialism is a strong force that wars against the soul of man, especially in the United States of America. And what's worse, now many want it without any work. Tell me that's not bizarre. They want it now. It is the curse of the modern instant society. It is a curse. It's not a blessing. Many on the streets now will lie, cheat, steal, kill, do anything for material possessions. That's the world we live in now. Everybody give me a north and south if you think I might be telling the truth. Okay. And what's worse, now they can rob you on the street and they're arrested and released on the same day and then they're back at it. Because they're driven by covetousness. Do you remember the command, thou shalt not covet? Now we teach it as Political philosophy. This guy has this material possession. He does not deserve it. We must take it from him and give it to someone else. It's covetousness. And we teach and train an entire culture to covet what other people have instead of being thankful for what God has given them. Think about it. At least think about it. The motto is, you owe me. Am I preaching the truth? Anybody hearing what I'm saying? Is it a little too heavy or is it okay to go ahead and preach the truth once in a while? Paul warned all who would listen. And I believe his warning also applies to us. He warned in 1 Timothy 6.10... He said, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some, having craving for money, have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Greed, covetousness. I want what you have. See, your job nor your possessions can be your God. Many Americans make their job their God. Your job and your employer is not your provider if you're a Christian. God just happens to be using them to meet your needs at this point in your life. But God is your provider. His name is Jehovah Jireh. I am the Lord who provides. The promise to the Christian is, My God shall supply all my need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And He might even use an employer here on earth to do it, but He's not my provider. Am I preaching good yet? See, the followers of Christ put God in first place. Matthew 6 and 33 says it this way, Seek first the kingdom of God above all else. That's putting God in His proper place. Above all else. And live righteously. And He will give you everything you need. He will give you everything you need. 
You don't have to strive over it, worry about it, fret over it, hold on to this, invest here, worry about that, and, and running around like the sky is falling, the stock market's crashing. I'm so worried the stock market's not going to meet your need. God's going to meet your need. But no, 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 not in this culture. In this culture, I want it now. I want it now. But the Christian doesn't say that. The Christian says, I want what my father has for me. That's what I want because I know that's what's best. Because father knows best. See, the Christian knows, they know that father loves me. And he says, which of you fathers on earth? Would, would, if your son asks for an egg, are you going to give him a stone or a scorpion? Or you, if he asks for bread, are you going to give him a I mean, come on, you wouldn't do that. How much more will your heavenly father give good things to his children? You're God's child and God has good things in store for you. This world tries to Get us off course. Get us chasing after. We're, we're, the, the, many Christians act like the dog that sees the squirrel. You know what I'm talking about? You're trying to walk the dog or whatever. Squirrel, squirrel, and there goes the dog. It's gone, right? Many Christians act that way with the world around us. We must not get swept up into this culture that's saying, I want it now. I want it now. I have to have instant possessions. So Jesus teaches us to trust God. In fact, he warns in Matthew 6, 19, do not store up treasures here on earth. He says on earth, this is where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. He says store up your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Why, Jesus? Why are you telling that? I'm glad you asked. Here's the answer. Because wherever your treasure is, there will the desires of your heart also be. What you truly love is where you put your money. See, that's why you, you might notice after six years of pastoring here, I don't do a whole lot of appeals for money. You know why? Because if Christians truly love God, where your heart is, there will your treasure be also. If I have to use gimmicks and promise you things and all kinds of things to get you to give, then it's because your heart's not right and my heart's not right trying to do that. Amen? Am I preaching good yet? Can I? Somebody say, Pastor Tom, you, you sure are preaching good today. Thank you. Is there another? Do I hear a second? We now proceed to vote. Angie, start the car. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And of course, that is certainly not consistent with the I want it now mantra. I've got to have it now. Let's move on to another one. How about instant popularity? Jesus says, no wonder you can't believe. You, it's not that you won't believe. You can't believe, he says to this crowd. No wonder you can't believe because you gladly honor each other, but you don't care about the honor who, that, that comes from the one who alone is God. No wonder so many say that they believe, but they don't live as true Christians. This issue begins early in life. Unfortunately, many spend their whole lives trying to find their significance from others. If a child can learn early in life about the acceptance of from God through Jesus Christ, it can save many issues. But yet many, even Christian kids, want to be popular. 
What a mistake. It's because they're not taught any better. Many kids and adults compromise their integrity and their values in order to be accepted by the crowd. And much parenting today, even Christian parenting, unfortunately, so-called, teaches this. The parents feed into this warped view. Whether it's at school, the office, the factory, or on the sports field, we can lose ourselves. Wanting to be popular, wanting to be accepted, wanting to be seen, wanting to be recognized, wanting to be noticed. Why? Because we've not been taught to wait on the Lord. To wait on God's recognition. To realize I've been accepted by God. Through Jesus Christ, I'm approved, I'm accepted by God. No, no, I want it now. They want to enter into the workforce and want to have a head position within six months or something. Have you noticed that yet? Why am I not president of this organization? I've been here every bit of six weeks. What is wrong with this organization? I'm not showing up anymore. These are strange times. Strange times. See, God's approval is what is most important. And He will supply the grace and the courage we need if we seek to honor Him rather than mere man. And that leads into my last thought for today. He promotes. But the way up is down. He will exalt us only if we humble ourselves before Him. And if we humble ourselves before Him, He'll put us in the best place, the right place that will glorify Him. But instead, many today want instant promotion. Instant promotion. And the wise writer in Proverbs, and this is probably one that most of the older generations heard. I, I don't think it's taught much to newer generations, but we all need to hear it and we need to remind her. And that is, pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before fall. How many of you heard that in your childhood more than once from your parents or somebody? Yeah, yeah. Don't get too proud. Because that, guess what? You're headed for a fall. See, the truth is, it is sinful pride in us that causes us to seek promotion without earning it, without deserving it, without waiting on the Lord. And often, you know this is true, the ones that get, they get it handed to them, end up doing very good with it, very little good. So it really doesn't do any good to cheat or to manipulate to get to the top. I think my slide changed, I'm not distracted. <laughs> when they get it without waiting on God, without God putting you in the position, they fail as leaders. How many times have we seen that? You get it by cheating and manipulating, you end up being a leader that does very little good. So it doesn't help. But if we're humble and we're patient, God prepares us and promotes us in this life. Listen to the advice of James again in chapter 4, verse, verse 10 of his book. He says, humble yourselves before the Lord and He will lift you up in honor. See, you never have to worry about it because God takes care of you. You just humble yourself before the Lord 
and God will put you in the right place. But instead, in our culture, we're taught to manipulate and cheat and lie and do whatever. Just get to the top. You need to get to the top. But James tells us the true formula. And that's how true promotion works. Now it might look different in some systems. But that's only man's promotion. God promotes us in life. And sometimes it translates over into systems. But often it does not. The kingdom of God is not bound by man's system. I learned this in the army many years ago with different... In man's system, they will promote based off of all kinds of crazy things. And if you're wanting to be promoted in man's system, especially if you're a child of God, you might get your heart broken a few times. But God will promote you in life. And that's what's most important. True promotion comes from God. And it's something that we don't even recognize on earth. I think many will be shocked in heaven. Many that looked so great here on earth. When you get to heaven, they're not going to have such a great position. And some little lady that got no recognition at all in this earth, but she prayed and she was faithful to God. And there she is being recognized in heaven. Oh, it's going to be an eye-opening situation for so many. True promotion comes from God. He's the true judge. Psalm 75 says it this way. No one on earth from east to west, even from the wilderness, should raise a defiant fist. It is God alone who judges. He decides who will rise and who will fall. And the greatest promotion is yet to come. Someday, if you are a believer, someday you will get an instant promotion. You will be instantly promoted to a land of peace, a land of joy, a land of love. I love it when people talk about the death of a Christian in that way. Sometimes they'll put that in an obituary that so-and-so was promoted to heaven. That's exactly what it is. Amen. Don't you love it when they write it that way? Because that's an instant promotion that only awaits the child of God who truly knows Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Do you have that assurance today in your heart? That should you leave this place today and be called into eternity this very day, that it will be a promotion, not a demotion. Don't leave this place today without that true assurance in your heart. And that is what awaits the child of God. Not a bunch of fake Christians running around that have no love or no time for God. Their whole life is spent on instant pleasure, seeking instant possessions, seeking instant promotion, seeking, I want it now, but for those with true faith in their hearts. So so for you and I today, let's not get caught up in the hustle and the bustle of this fast-paced society and lose out with God. The psalmist said, wait patiently for the Lord. Be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. Courageous has that word courage in it. The Christian can have courage. And and what I am here today to do in this message is to build your courage by encouraging you with these truths. I hope I've done that today in this message. Here is the encouragement, the empowering that comes from this text today is for us to enjoy our salvation and our relationship with God, not seek all the instant pleasures that oftentimes compromise our souls. To trust 
God to meet our needs and don't seek for the quick, the easy, or the immoral route. Not to seek for our significance from other people. If you like me, okay. If you don't, okay. But Jesus likes me. Amen. I'm his child. And that's the attitude we have to have as believers. You realize that even as a preacher, as charming as I am, do you realize that not everybody likes me? It's true. It's true. Where's Phil Donahue when you need him? This would make a good talk show segment, right? It don't matter who you are. You're not going to please every person. You're not going to be accepted or approved by every person. But oh, dear friend, today hear this gospel message. God has accepted you in Jesus Christ. Put your faith there and move from there. And that brings to you the true acceptance that we all must have in this life. If I win the game and I get the trophy, great. If I don't win and I don't get the trophy, I'm still God's child. Amen? So we don't seek our significance from other people. And we trust that God is able to lift us up in this life. And bring his glory into our lives and use us for his glory. And that's a happy life there. That's happy, happy, happy. Amen. That's a happy life. That is a truly fulfilled life. And it awaits all of God's children who wait patiently for him. Don't be tempted to get into a hurry. Don't be swayed by an instant society. But wait I say on the Lord and may this be transforming truth in each of our lives. Amen.